<laughs> this is Your Life, the program you dare not miss, brought to you by Ivory Soap, advised by more doctors for baby skin and yours. 99 and 44 one hundredths percent pure. It floats and by pace. The astonishing new no lotion home permanent. And now here he is, Mr. This is your life himself, Ralph Edwards. How do you do? Thank you very much. <laughs> well, tonight's the night in Hollywood, the 30th annual Oscar Awards of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. They'll be on NBC. Uh, from the Pantages Theater immediately following This Is Your Life, so don't switch channels. Some of that electric excitement seems to have uh, rubbed off on us, as you'll see right now. For the first time on This Is Your Life, uh, I'm going to take you behind the scenes to show you uh, where we usually hide the people in the past of our subject uh, before they come on stage for their surprise greetings. Now, you come on uh, and follow me. Uh, we're do doing it a little different. We're going to show the uh, past and here they are our guests you'll recognize some familiar faces here here's Robert Armbruster good to see you Robert thank you Ralph famous musical conductor and uh, this is Mala Powers hello Hi, Mala Ralph. how are you the subject on this is your life and a really great beautiful girl and 1953 Academy Award winner Donna Reed Hi, Ralph. <laughs> there are others here Hal uh, Dawson many other who shall we say belong I in whose life well, actually, uh, they don't belong in any one person's life. We've gathered them here uh, just to surprise one of them. And that one tonight is you, Donna Reed. Tonight, this is your life. <laughs> Act, take this book, throw it away. We don't need this. Here's the real book. <laughs> Look around you, Donnie. Do you know any of these people with the exception of Mala Powers? Do you know any of them? Maybe Robert Armbruster. Uh, do you know whose life? Uh, who did you think uh, they belonged in? Whose life? Well, Harry Joe Brown. Yes, the Hollywood producer and business partner of your good friend Randolph Scott, who, by the way, helped us set all this up. He was in the dressing room just a moment ago here with Donna and some others. No, they're just decoys, you see. Our thanks to all of you. Mala and to Bob Armbruster, uh, Francis McDonald back there, Hal Dawson, Estelle Milmar, Ray Gordon, and George Boston. Thanks to all of you. Now you come along with me. <laughs> oh, I'm just so pleased. I, I mean, we, we had to w work up a whole extra script for this. Donna Reed, come on through this archway to our stage because I want to show you something. Now you come on out here. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Donna, I, uh, I want to show you something. Uh, there are the real people back there uh, whose Where? life will be a part of yours. They really do belong in your life. In silhouette, of course, you see them now. Each I one has in some way father. played, each one in some way has played his or her part in your journey from an Iowa farm, Donna, to your present eminence in Hollywood's galaxy of stars. This is the story we're about to tell. A story that might well be titled, The Birth of a Star. Now in a moment, we'll begin uh, with you and your fascinating and inspiring journey. A journey that reached its climax four years ago tonight on the stage of the Pantages Theater where in less than half an hour others will be thrilled as you were. But now, first, we want to bring you a scene from the life of a working girl who knows a value when she sees one. Personal size ivory. <laughs> Oops. Well, a working girl has to do her shopping just like everybody else. And this working girl knows a value when she sees one. Personal size ivory. Mm-hmm. She knows that she can buy four cakes of personal size ivory for about the same price as three cakes of any other leading toilet soap. It's like getting an extra cake free. And like all smart girls, she knows something else. Ivory does the nicest things for a girl's complexion. Regular care with baby mild ivory leaves her with that ivory look. Skin so fresh and clear. Her complexion's going to look its prettiest for that date tonight. Smart girl. Thrifty girl. 
Get personal size ivory for your complexion. Buy four cakes and save. Well, Donna, let's turn our backs on that memorable night exactly four years ago, March 25th, 1954, at the Pantages Theater here in Hollywood. And you sit here, and uh, let's journey backward in time and halfway across the continent to the rolling hills of an Iowa farm just outside the little town of Denison. Now, you can look around once more, Donna, right there. Oh. Is this a scene that's familiar <laughs> yes. to you? That's home. That's home. That's the farm back in Iowa. What fairy godmother's magic wand touched a little baby girl's shoulder and set the pattern that was one day to transform a farm girl into a princess? I'm afraid that in those bad depression years of the 30s, there was little time on the farm to dream of fairy godmothers and princesses. If there was any magic, I think it lay in our own very busy hands. Well, there's your heritage, Donna, inherent in the rich black loam of Iowa. From these two, your father and mother, in the true tradition of the American farmer, stands your hope, your courage, and your faith. And here they are from Denison, Iowa, Mom and Pop, Mr. and Mrs. William Mullinger. How many children do you have, Mrs. Mullinger? I have five. Come on and stand on the other side of Donna, and we'll put her right in the middle. Oh, so good to see them. Yeah, well, uh, now I look at the, you can see where Donna gets her looks, can't you? They're all an important part of your childhood, those five children that Mommy talked about, your brothers and sisters, on the farm there, Donna. So here they all are, Keith oh. from New York City, Heidi, oh. the wife of Dr. Michael Flynn of Beverly Hills, oh. California. Billy from Denison, Iowa, and Karen also from Denison. Here they are. <laughs> and this is the first time, let's see, isn't this the first time you've all been together, Donna, since 1942? Oh, my goodness. 16 uh, years since you've all is, been together at one time. Seems like a, a, a good chance to have everybody get his nickels worth. So, <laughs> Dad and Mom, take uh, Don over there and sit down, uh, and uh, we'll all gather around. Now, uh, you, know, you can sit there, Donna, and we'll... Everybody's going to get his nickels worth in. Let's start with you, Mr. Mullinger. What have you got to say about this gal? Well, like all farm children, Donna had her chores to do. And <laughs> sure did. <laughs> ever since she's a little girl. Uh -huh. Such as uh, gathering eggs, milking the cows, and cooking and canning and working in the garden. Yeah, yeah that's true. And don't forget, she helped with the younger children. Yes, yeah. she did. Well, she sounds like a mighty busy yeah. little girl you were, huh, Donna? Well, it was wonderful. How about it, Keith? Well, <clears throat> it wasn't all hard work. There were the lighter moments. The high school plays and band and lead club and declamatory contests. <laughs> and I think <clears throat> maybe you can remember that. Ham then. <laughs> remember that sad, sad song we sang down at the corn show in Manila, Iowa? I sure do. You oh. mean? You remember the words of the Yes, band? I think I do. Was that, um, Mother dear can bathe my forehead before I'm growing very weak. Let one drop of water fall upon my burning cheek. <laughs> Tell my mo uh, loving little playmates I no longer more can play. Give them all my toys but mother. Put my little shoes away. Oh, that... <laughs> you remember that? Boy, that was a <laughs> sad one. Well, it wasn't a dry yeah. in the house. No. <laughs> we also sang Strawberry Roan, as I remember. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, uh, that isn't quite as sad as no. the mama put my little shoes away. <laughs> Billy... What about you, boy? Well, I'm sure we all remember the old country schoolhouse. One yeah. room oh. deal with the stove at the end. Yeah. You, you remember the name of it, Nun? Nishnabotany uh, number nine. Number three. three. Number You're three? Close. I forgot. <laughs> 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 Missed it by six. I'm sorry. Well, what about the winters? Well, well, naturally, like all kids, we wanted to play in the snow. And we'd get wet and, wanted to, and we'd come in and try to get warm around the stove. Sure. Dry the mittens out That's there, right. eh? That's right. yeah. Memories of little things half forgotten that help shape your childhood, Donna Reed. And do you remember, Donna, how the boys used to carry buckets of water from your home to our school? That's your well-loved teacher at that little one-room schoolhouse yeah. in Iowa. Uh, she saw you through the fifth, sixth, and seventh grades, and here she is now to share her memories with you, Miss Marion Drake, Drake, now I Mrs. Know. Earl Justice of Manila, Iowa. She's now Mrs. Justice now. Oh, What'd you say? Are. Best teacher I ever had. Boy, <laughs> is that a thrill girl. to hear. I was a lucky girl to was there, in a country school. Oh, bless your heart. Ms. Just Justice, wonderful. was there anything about Donna as a child that might have suggested uh, her, her future success as an actress? 
Well, I don't know, but she was an awful good little girl, just a girl that every teacher would be so happy to have in their room. Mm -hmm. And she just always knew her lessons. She never oh. made a mistake. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> she recite well, too? Oh, you betcha she did. <laughs> well, that goes with acting, of course, yeah. the reciting. Uh, do you remember any of uh, your childhood recitations, Donna? I'll bet she does. Gee, I'm sorry, I don't. Well, uh, you do, don't you, Miss Justice? Yes, I brought one along, Donna. <laughs> <laughs> what is the name oh of it? Betty gosh, at the baseball right. game. Oh. And you can just have that for a souvenir. Oh, bless <laughs> your heart. <laughs> well, now, Karen, we haven't heard from you. I understand you're pretty good at recitations, too. Well, I try. <laughs> but I want to say how proud we all are of Donna. And I think she's inspired us all to do the very best we can in everything. And Keith's in his last semester of law school, and he's already an engineer. And Heidi's a very successful model. And Bill's made a success at the farm, and I'm a sophomore in high school. <laughs> yes, and winning declamatory contests all over the state of Iowa, too. <laughs> oh, I'm sure that Donna is equally proud of her wonderful family and grateful for the inspiration of her teacher. Our thanks to all of you, Mom and Dad, brothers and sisters, and Mrs. Justice. You'll all be able to get together at the party in Donna's honor at the uh, Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel right after the uh, show. And, uh, Mr. Mullinger, I wonder if you'll escort Mama back there. All the friends have been staying there and your family at the Hollywood Roosevelt past two or three days. Oh, two or three days, sure. <laughs> well, it's 1934 now. Donna, you share with many others like you the almost frightening experience of a girl from the farm going to the nearby town to enter high school. For you, it's Denison High. You lived in town during your high school years, didn't you, Donna? Yes, I, I lived with my grandmother Mullinger. Yes, it's hard for us to believe now, but that freshman year in high school was a year of teenage loneliness for you, Donna, we're told. And then in your sophomore year, you make a friend. We often didn't have the dime it took to go to the movies on Saturday afternoon, so we'd go to the library. <laughs> Your high school pal and your friend through the years from Birmingham, Michigan, here is Joyce Anderson, now Mrs. Ronald Fisk. Thank you. And when the library closed, uh, you two would sit on the steps and talk, eh, Joyce? Yes, yes. we talked mostly about how to be popular. Yes. Oh, now look, you were both pretty girls. Uh, you mean tell me you weren't popular? Why weren't you popular? No, we were poor but honest, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> we used to, uh, well, we didn't have the pretty clothes that a lot of the popular girls had in school. And there was sort of a clique of girls that ran the social activities. And <laughs> yes, we, we figured if you didn't belong to that group, you just you weren't just anybody. Out. And then a miracle for Donna. I saw in Donna a bright and intelligent girl and sensed that underneath her shyness, there was a natural charm. Yes, Donna, the high school teacher uh, whose influence wrought magic in your life. Now, you had him in biology and chemistry. Here he is, now an important research scientist from San Carlos, California, Dr. Edward R. Tompkins. Thank you. Thank you. you don't change it. He never changes. No, I told him this afternoon as we were talking about what we might say and all that, I said, you, uh, you must have eternal youth. say how long ago this was. <laughs> Well, we'll give you a chance to get sort of reacquainted uh, right now. In a moment, we'll learn what all-important effect Dr. Tompkins' influence and guidance had on you, Donna Reed. In the meantime, let's do this. Let's watch a young woman out alone on an old bridge as she solves an old problem. is the end of waving lotion forever. Pace is here. New Pace. Procter & Gamble's astonishing no lotion home permanent. Ends lotion mess forever. In this envelope lies the secret. The permanence in the papers. Yes, the end papers contain the waving ingredients. You do your Pace permanent the usual way, except you don't use messy waving lotion. Plain, clear water releases the waving action. And because each paper contains just the right amount of waving ingredients, your Pace Wave will be perfect, a lasting wave that leaves your hair so wonderfully soft and natural looking, and you so beautiful. Get Pace, the astonishing new no lotion permanent.
back now to This Is Your Life, Donna Reed, 1953 Academy Award winner, and our story, The Birth of a Star. But this is 1936, you said don't tell any years around here, but 36 is a good safe year, and you're a sophomore at Denison, <laughs> a sophomore at Denison High School in Iowa, Donna, and your science teacher is giving you some good advice. Now, what did you tell Donna, Dr. Tompkins? Uh, well, I urged her to uh, get acquainted with other people and to find out what their interests were and uh, try to forget her own troubles and problems, and in that way that perhaps she could over overcome some of her shyness. By the time you left Denison, Dr. Tompkins, at the end of Donna's junior year, she'd uh, already made some progress, hadn't uh, she? Yes, she sure had. And uh, after that, we kept writing, and I tried to encourage her further. And uh, uh, during uh, the letters that she had sent to me, I could see that she was finding a lot more happiness in mm -hmm. school mm -hmm. and was overcoming a shyness and becoming very popular. And finally, I remember one letter, uh, she said, uh, now, uh, uh, what can I do for you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what, did, uh, what did Dr. Tompkins write back? Do you recall, Donna, about being popular in school and have a lead in the school play, I think, to try to get a lead in the school play? Oh, yes, yes. I think Urged me to go out for dramatic. And That's Donna right. uh, didn't... Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, didn't let her former teacher down, did she, Joyce? She certainly didn't. Uh, as the most popular girl in school that year, she was voted May Queen, and um, you had the lead in the senior class play, remember? Yes. The night of January, January 16th. <laughs> <laughs> and at the same time, just to prove that you haven't forgotten your earlier farm training, as a member of your 4-H club, uh, you win a blue ribbon at the Iowa State Fair in bread baking contest. <laughs> Thank you, Edward R. Tompkins, Dr. Tompkins. Thank you. And Joyce, Mrs. Ronald Fisk. We'll see you later. Your high school days behind you here in 1938. You're chin high now. You journey out to California and enroll at the Los Angeles City College. Why LACC, Donna? Well, we didn't have shall we say, an excessive amount of money in those yes, days. Yes, know what you mean. And um, I had an aunt who was living out here, mm -hmm. and she invited me to come and stay with her until I got started at City College, which you can attend at that time for five for a $5 student body card and the cost of your books. And it was a, it was a oh. rare opportunity, good yes, opportunity indeed. for me. Now you're some 2,000 miles closer to Hollywood. Yes. And that very first year, uh, you had a prominent place on the Southgate uh, float in the Tournament of Roses Parade in Pasadena. A glamorous experience for a girl working yes. her way through oh, college. Oh, very exciting. <laughs> and Donna's aunt lived too far from Los Angeles City College, so she came to live with us and work for us. And a nicer girl to have in your home you couldn't find. The couple you affectionately called George and Auntie John, now living in Carpinteria, California, here are Mr. and Mrs. George Johnson. <laughs> Well, would you say, Mrs. Johnson, that uh, Donna worked hard in college? She worked hard. Up at 7 in the morning, all day in school, and jobs between classes to earn a little extra money, and then home to earn a room and board to help me with cooking and dishes and a little ironing, and then study until midnight. I don't think she ever had more than six hours sleep. But I wanted to tell you that Auntie John was so wonderful. She, she just made a wonderful home for me. I'll, I'll never forget you. Oh, you were wonderful. We loved it. <clears throat> she never fretted, never complained, and always was a joy to have around the house and was very, very Poppy. happy and, uh, and popular with mm -hmm. the girls at school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in 1940, was chosen queen of the campus. Yes. Well, that picture in the Los Angeles Times on December 2nd, 1940, opened the door, so to speak, to the fairyland of Hollywood for you, Donna Reed. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. George Johnson. <laughs> This is Metro Goldwyn Mayer, colossus of the motion picture industry, and through these gates, through the years, have entered the hopeful, their hearts pounding, their dreams soaring. And you, Donna, were one of those. Donna Mullinger, the girl from the Iowa farm, was now in Hollywood, knocking on the golden door. 
We at the old Feldman Blum Agency saw Donna's picture in the Los Angeles Times, and we liked what we saw. Well, there's the man who guided your first hopeful steps toward a picture career, Donna. Your agent in 1941, now the head of radio and television for 20th Century Fox Studios, Mr. Bill Smith. <laughs> I'm so nervous I can't see. You're the man who opened that golden door for Donna, aren't you, Bill? Yeah, yeah. Well, let's say that it was my good fortune to take it to Metro Golden and Mayor and introduce her to the right people. And they were excited as we were. They tested her, Donna Mullinger became Donna Reed. Mm -hmm. A starlet at $75 a week. Oh, it was like a million. <laughs> Just like, like that to hear Bill dollars. talk. But stardom for Donna was still a long way off, Bill. Yeah, but this girl was a real worker. I mean it, Donna, you were. It was only a month or so after Donna got there and she was in a new picture called The Getaway, and doll, you were great. Well, at the first sneak preview, members of the audience seeing you for the first time. She was wonderful. Oh, they wrote comments like these on the uh, cards provided them. More of Miss Reed, they, they wrote. Uh, the young actress, all right. The girl is very good. Donna Reed, a comer. It seems uh, the audience liked you, Donna, right from the start. And so did I. I married the gal. Well, I'm sure ah. you've been waiting to hear that voice, Donna. Your husband, Hollywood producer, Tony Owen. Here's Tony. <laughs> Okay, Bill. Thank you, Bill Smith. Bill's rushing to the um, uh, Academy Awards, and you sit down over here, Tony, by your girl. You'll go in ahead of her Here's there. Here's a man who could never keep a secret. How he kept it tough on him, I want to tell you. Oh, would you say Donna got off to a fast start uh, oh, yeah, uh, in her film career, Oh, sure. Tony? Once she got started, there was no stopping her in pictures. It was first the uh, courtship of Andy Hardy, and then... Uh, uh, calling Dr. Mm -hmm. Gillespie, and uh, then uh, the human comedy, and then see here Private Hargrove. And mm. your romance, did it move as fast as Donna's career? Not so fast. Remember, you could <laughs> never get over calling me Mr. Mr. Owen. <laughs> and, and after what I thought was a year of real courtship, when I finally proposed, Ralph, she said, no, Mr. Owen. <laughs> <laughs> but you obviously changed your mind, Donna, because your career as a wife is launched on June 15, 1945, and the success of your happy marriage is rivaled only by the succession of your great performances. Performances which led right up to From Here to Eternity and that night of nights all stars dream of, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences Awards. For you, Donna Reed, that night is March 25th, 1954, and we'll relive that climactic evening in your career in just a moment, but first, you know, we all like to sing out with good news, especially when it's good news about us. And here's a little girl who's no exception. Jeannie, that's wonderful. The dentist says no new cavities this visit. Well, I'm glad we changed to Crest toothpaste. Today, happy scenes like this are taking place thanks to Crest, the toothpaste that stops soft spots from turning into cavities. For proof, let's visit the Midwestern town of Bloomington. Here, over a four-year period, thousands of grown-ups and children took part in repeated tests on Crest, the most extensive testing program ever conducted on any toothpaste. The results? Well, x-rays and dental examinations showed Crest cut cavities almost in half compared with ordinary toothpaste. That's because Crest, with its special fluoride formula, Floristan, stops soft spots from turning into cavities. Make Crest your family toothpaste, and you too may hear... Oh, Ma! Look, Ma! No cavities! Donna Reed, I'll bet you were a pretty excited girl that March night in 1954 at the Pantages Theater, waiting to hear the answer to the question, who will be the Oscar winners for 1953? You've come a long way from that Iowa farm. Behind you now are years of study and preparation, patience and hard work, but most of all, gratitude for those who helped you along the way, and faith in yourself. On stage, someone is opening an envelope, and then you hear these words. For the best achievement, by an actress in a supporting role in From Here to Eternity, Donna Reed. That was the moment, right? <laughs> the greatest. You weren't the only one excited because From Here to Eternity won eight Oscars for Columbia Pictures that year, including the coveted Best Picture Award. 
At this very moment, all the notables of the movie world are streaming into the Pantages Theater to take part in this year's Academy Awards. And one of these is the producer of From Here to Eternity, last year's Thalberg, uh, Thalberg Award winner, now head of production at 20th Century Fox, and he wants to say a word or two to you, Donna, Mr. Buddy Adler. Hello, Donna. I wish I could be there with you, but this is an important night for all of us in the industry. You know that, I'm sure. Being here at the Pantages again, I find it easy to remember that night four years ago. We were all excited and very proud, of course, the honors our industry bestowed on From Here to Eternity. But I was especially happy for you, Donna. You were great in that picture. I hope I can find another role for you that will do it all over again. Thank you, Mr. Buddy Adler. We're all waiting to see your great film version of South Pacific. Well, Donna, we hope we've awakened some happy memories for you tonight. Memories etched in gold on this charm bracelet by Marshall Jewelers of New York City. Each charm representing a special memory. And this night is recorded on a film that Ivory will see that you get together with this Bell and Howell sound projector to show it on, as well as this Bell and Howell 16 millimeter movie camera. Now, you want to use that to keep a record of your children as they grow up. Uh, let's see the children. There's Penny, age 12. Tony Jr., 11. Timmy, 8 years old. And there's Tony here with 10 months old. <laughs> you go on over there and sit down, gang. That's it. The lovely family of a lovely movie star. You sit right in the, in the middle over there, uh, Timmy. And you can sit there, honey. And listen to this, you young ones. Ivory's going to see to it that you have this RCA Victor Mark I high fidelity set. It's RCA's finest complete audio center with matching panoramic speaker system. And to add to your uh, record collection, we want you to select some 200 RCA Victor albums uh, from their almost inexhaustible catalogs. You'll enjoy them as a family. Your latest picture for Columbia, The Whole Truth, is soon to be released, we understand, Donna. And next fall, we'll all be watching for you in your own television series, The Donna Reed Show. This is your life, Donna Reed, the Iowa farm girl who became a great actress, but who always has time for her family, her friends, and her church. We think that in whatever walks of life we may be, your example is an inspiration to all of us. Good night, and God bless you. Our out-of-town guests are flown to Hollywood via TWA's luxurious jet stream featuring exclusive siesta sleeper seats. Fly the finest. Fly TWA jet stream service. This is Your Life has been presented by Crest, the toothpaste that strengthens soft spots, means far less decay. Look, Mom, no cavity. And by Pace, the astonishing new no lotion home permanent. <laughs> Donna, how do you feel? All right, girl? I don't know how you did it. <laughs> <laughs> Next week on This Is Your Life, a story of valiant men enduring incredible hardships and coming through with flying colors. This one will have uh, your heart in your throat, really. Don't miss it. And stay tuned now to NBC for the Academy Awards. We have our own winner. Good night, everybody. Good night. This Is Your Life. It's a Ralph Edwards production. Produced by Axel Gronberg and directed by Richard Gottlieb. job for you. That's the Red Cross in flood or tornado, war or peace. Now Red Cross needs you. Join and serve.